everyone, welcome back today. Today we've got this Dow Octoplex 3010 unit. Um, this is a machine I got off of eBay for about £45 in Great British Pounds. This is the machine here. This is all available on your site, sir. So yeah, this is the Dow Octoplex unit. It runs Windows 10 right now. It can run a Windows 7. Obviously, Windows 7 has that support. Please be aware, this is part two-part series. First of all, this part, we are taking the machine apart to, down to its motherboard, including taking out the CPU and all that stuff within the machine. The first step will be to open the door panel. We do this by putting this and go, woohoo, and out it comes. I'm going to put this over here, out of the way. You obviously won't be able to see me doing that. Okay. Obviously, all these parts are in here. We've got this heat sink fan there, the GPU, power supply. Case fan, I don't know if you can see that. So what we'll do is just do that and show you that's the case fan, GPU, and all the other components within the computer. Okay, the first step will be to remove the GPU or drives here. We're gonna start with the GPU. Okay, to remove the GPU, you've got this little, little um, white tab, you push down and it will release. I know you release the GPU by pulling it and it will come out like this. This is the NVIDIA GeForce GT710 graphics card with a special base with a special air thingy on it. I'll leave that over there. The next step will be to remove this if you wanted to. I don't know if there's a problem. You can take it out or leave it in. Okay, I'll take that out. Okay. The next step is to remove the hard drives and unplug the first. Both of those come out. It's depending if you've got some cable management, you might have to go to your cable management holes within your own case. In this case, there's not much cable management. I want to unplug them and put these cables elsewhere. And then we'll unplug the good old power. This is our hard drives. One of them is a solid state drive, um, a 256 gig, and the other is a terabyte, terabyte SSD slash hard drive um, combo machine. Um, basically, these are very quick drives, um, very responsive for the sort of needs I need for this sort of machine. It's mainly for little service tasks within my house and learning how to build computers. I know a lot about building computers, but by the way, I'm not, I'm not responsible if you break anything within your own machine for example, um, parts are quite expensive, and this is more of a this is a second gen Core i five system. It's clocked up to around three forty on the turbo boost side. Okay, the next step will be in this unit to unplug the CPU power. It's very easy. You click a button and pull up. Just be careful you don't break the pins within there. The only reason you saw me having a quick look is to still in case I didn't damage it, but it's all good. So the next step is to remove this thing. You might need to. On depending on the machine you won't have this because this is a Dell Octoplex 390 super small form factor machine we've got one of these and all this is all smaller than most machines you'd find in a normal full size machine the next step will be to remove the CPU fan power cord this is easy you just push the little button and then pull up and that will unplug the next stage is to unplug the, all the front I.O. and all that equipment for USB, audio and all that, including your power button up here. This will unplug just by pulling on it and it will unplug. You can also close your RAM slockets because you won't need those right now. Then I would put that else somewhere else in your case for now. For now I'm going just to put that in that area over there. Um, you could probably do the same with this one. Just put it all in out the way of the case for now. Because you won't be needing these. These are just stay there for as long as you need them. Um, the next step will be to I better remove the power supply unit. This is a little tricky task because you've got the power supply cable here. So you've got to press the little button and pull. Sometimes it can be quite hard. Or you can on my case I need to remove this first. Um, so yes. We're going to remove this by unscrewing it until it falls out. Be very careful it doesn't break anything when you do that. As I could have broke it, but I don't think it has this at the moment of time. I suppose it's fine. 
Even though these motherboards, because they're used nowadays, are quite cheap to replace, if you do have any problems, the one's about about thirty pound on eBay. I would rather not. It's broken. I'd rather it more works these days. Now and unplug this case fan. I'm gonna put that back on its side and hold that up. You'll see this is the uh, for a disk drive. This case hasn't got one, but I'm still gonna unravel it. Um, I probably should remove the fan or the power supply. I'd rather do both at the same time. Um, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Please leave a like, comment and description below if you want to know more info about this machine. Um, as you might be getting quite bored. Obviously this machine is a Dell Optiplex 390, some super form, small form factor. We're now going to remove these three screws. This one, that one and that one. As you can see, I'm going to show you. This screw removes right here. And then... I've got a special little box to my left hand side. I don't think you can see. I'm going to put my screw in there and put that away where you won't be able to see that in the screen. But you'll see it in a minute when I want to remove the power supply unit. What? What? You can't see that box. Oh, apparently my brother you can see it. So yeah, that box is seeable on the screen today. Um, I don't know how many of you know about computers inside. But this is the part one series of um, removing a computer. This is a Dell Octoplex 3090 series. Has a Core i5 2400 with 8 gig of RAM. They're both DDR3, 4 gigs per DIMM. So it has two DIMM sockets, that makes it a total of 8 gig of RAM. The next step will be removing the power supply unit. This is quite simple on this machine. You want to get a screwdriver and press the button. And then pop it away. Now the next step, this can be quite hard. You want to be very careful, you don't break any capacitors on the board. It's quite simple, and you want to pull away. And this is the power supply unit from the Dell 3090. This is an Octoplex series. These are quite small, because you've got a small area where it fits in the case. The next step will be to remove the motherboard. Or actually the heat sink at this case. Because the heat sink is in the way, because at the back of the case, you'll notice you've got two, two things here. These make it quite hard to remove, so you only need to remove the heat sink first. What you do is do, have dynamically do the screws. So you want to do this one first, and then go to the other angle screw, to this side of the left. This is quite a simple thing to do in this type of case. And then you want to go to the other screw to the right hand side. Now the next screw on the left hand side is also another easy screw to remove. You can easily take the fan off as well if you want to clean, clean it out. But for some reason if you wanted to. In my case I won't be removing it. You might also want it when you're removing the motherboard. You might want to have a magnetic screwdriver. Because it might make it easier to remove all your screws. Now you want to lift it. You might find one of the screws is still holding it. Since this left one might be still in. Or this left one over here. Now you want to lift the heatsink away from the machine. You'll see the old thermal compound is still on the machine. We won't be moving the thermal compound to until part two. But if you're thinking about removing it now, you just want to get a damp piece of kitchen roll and clean the CPU and clean the heat sink and make sure it's completely dry afterwards otherwise you could damage something the motherboard underneath the CPU there's pins so that's a little bit quite dangerous we won't be removing the CPU until we move it out of the motherboard cell by itself the next step will be to remove the motherboard you can see that there's quite in this case there's one two three four five five six screws in this unit I'm going to remove all six and put them into the box behind me. I hope you're enjoying this video today. This screw goes into that box as you remember what I said a minute ago. And then we remove this screw right next to the motherboard. And put it in that box behind me. Now we're going to remove this screw and put it behind the box behind me. Then you see the screw up here. We're going to put that in the same box behind me in a minute. 
if the screw doesn't come out straight away, you might want to put a little bit of pressure on that screw. But remember, you might damage your motherboard or you stand off below it. Just remember, guys, let's not damage anything with inside your computer. You don't want that to land on there and break something. That's why I'm being very careful when unscrewing. So if it does drop onto some component, you're less likely to break something within your computer. Okay, the next step is to remove the motherboard from the case. You might want to get a nice cardboard box so where you can put it to. In my case, we got an old graphics card box. Now, we're going to put it like that. And it could be quite simple. We want to put those cables outside of the case. Oops. And put that over there so we don't do that again. You want to make sure you've got no cables within your case so they don't get within your way. Some of them can be a little bit annoying or childish. But the best way is to get your hand underneath the board and pull away. And be very careful so you don't damage anything like I just did there. Now the motherboard and case are out of the way. I would recommend putting this somewhere else for now. Okay. This is the motherboard itself within the 3090. I want to make sure that graphics card slot is actually closed. The next step will be to remove your CPU within your machine. Zoom in please Jack. What you do is remove this arm here and lift up very slowly. CPUs can be quite hard to pick up with one finger. So what I recommend, because it's an Intel CPU, there's no pins underneath it. But still be very careful you don't break the pins underneath the board. So this is the CPU, this is the Intel Core i5-2400. This is the i5-2400. Okay, I'll put that out over there so we don't just get in our way. So I hope you enjoyed part one, I hope you find this video very useful. Um, part two will be out in a couple of days or maybe out at the same time. Thank you for watching and have a great day and please rate and comment and subscribe. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of building this Dell Optiplex machine. Um, today and now I'm on my own building this machine so if there's suddenly some zooming in and not doing anything for a few minutes that's because it's only me now doing this machine. Um, next step will be to install our good old Core i5 into back into the machine. So while we do that, we've got a little bit of thermal compound left on it, but I took it off now mainly, so what we do is open the socket by pulling this arm and lifting up. And this will allow you inside your CPU. Please check that arrow and align your CPU with the arrow and lift that in. Could be very careful you don't break your CPU. See if you don't line that properly within your socket, you could break your computer. They want to make sure that's closed. That's all plugged in. Now we need our thermal compound. Actually, we can do that later as we put it back into the case. Because then we can I'm not break and not a wreck the thermal compound. Okay, the next step will be let's install the RAM now. Okay, here's one of our four gig stick. What we're going to do, I'm just going to check you can see that okay before I start. Okay, yeah, you can't see that. Oops, sorry, that's sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to zoom this in for you um, so you can see me installing this. For one, oops, and there you go, so you can see the RAM sockets. Cool. Okay, this is our four gig stick. Let's open both sockets and put the first dim in. And then let's plug the other socket stick in. Both sticks are in, I'm just going to zoom it out for you, so now we won't need that to be zoomed in any further. Cool. Let's continue with this video series. Let's just double check that's okay for you. 
cool. Um, guys, obviously I'm not the best at video production. Uh, video photography. Um, some of you don't look the straightest. I apologise for that for you now. Um, obviously I make the best I can. Um, the next step would be to put it back into the case really and start screwing the machine back in. We we'll get our good old case again. As we did earlier, you want to hold it from uh, some delicate thing in your machine. See this part there for a minute. Let's put these cables. I'm just going to check out the best. Yeah. Um, outside of the case, this is a part, two part series. So while this video is recording, the other one is uploading. That one's got 12 minutes. So when you might when you see this one, you obviously you know the other one would be up first. So you most likely would have sought saw one of them first. Um, I'm obviously aware that I'm not the best at building PCs. Well, I'm not too bad really. Okay. There we are. Okay. The next step will be to make sure this is all straight. Okay, next step is to get your screwdriver again and get all the motherboard screws put back in. Um, the next step, I'm hoping you all enjoy this video so far. If not, please leave a comment below and tell me why. I obviously can't improve this sort of video because this machine is slightly different to what I would normally work on. My main machine behind me is the Dell Intersprom. Um, I could do a rebuild series on that really, but that machine has got, this piece doesn't work properly, but I fixed it. It's not the original design how it would have worked, but it does work. Um, yeah, so that I could do a, do a PC building on that in the future. Obviously not straight away. Um, but in the future, um, the next step will be to put this screw in on this over here. This is a quite a quick piece to build when you get used to it. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, make sure these screws obviously line the best they can. Um, let's get our final screw. My next to the RAM. Okay. You could either put thermal compound in or you could plug your essential wires in. You could put your power supply in. The next thing I'm going to do, you could put the PSU in. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this in. This just goes right here and you just turn it till it's fully tight in this sort of machine. And that's all in. The next step for me could be the PSU, thermal compound heat sink. I'm going to do the heatsink now, so I'm going to plug a few of these cables in for the fans. Um, Sorry, I'm not Sorry. sure. Sorry about my Alexa in the background. She'd like to talk to me for a few minutes for some reason, I don't know why. Just thought she said I don't know why she wanted to say that to me. Obviously just ignore it guys, it's not a problem. She decided to talk. Well, rather she didn't talk. Um, so yeah. Well, that's power, power, power buttons are plugged in. You'll probably notice I've just done a cable manage that slightly around these little hooks. Um, what I will do is try and do that a little bit. Okay. I could plug the USB 3 cable in into the USB 3 header. These cause me any issues with power the power supply, and what I will easily do is just put them elsewhere around the case for now. Because obviously the PSU and wanting to go in around the same area. And you see. Um, yeah, cool. And that plugs in over there. And this one plugs in over here. So I can 
I'm going to plug in for some reason. Is that going straight enough? Cool. Okay, that's all those front IOs plugged in. Make sure they're all straight so you get a good no bios errors on the ne your next boot. Okay, next will be the thermal compound. This is the stuff that helps the machine from not overheating. You could run it without it, but it's your fine computer might catch fire. Or more, most likely it'll just turn itself off because it can't cool itself down. What I'm going to do, I'm just put a little dot in the middle. I recommend the exact amount I've done. And now you want to put your heat sink on the top of that. Um, so yeah. I'm obviously going to zoom in for you while just so you can see exactly how much I put on. And now I'm just going to leave it like that for a few minutes. Next up is the heat sink guys. You'll need to line this up at the front first, in this case anyway. And then... Or you could at least plug the heatsink in first, I suppose. Yeah, I'm having some issues screwing this, and not screwing it in. Getting it aligned. Uh, yeah, I'm going to remove the RAM for now, guys. <coughs> I don't think the RAM was the issue. Just to make it easier. I'm just going to duck down for a sec so I can just see why it was okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, seems to be they're all lined in. Well, I'm here, I'm just going to plug that in. Okay, now you need to screw these screws in. And under this screw over here. And right, I'll screw this in. And this one over here. You might want to give a little bit of pressure, you might not need to in your case. And then you might want to plug the round back in. Um, yeah, so. That video I was uploading, guys, is nearly uploaded. That's got five minutes left, and that will be up on YouTube for you guys to watch. That's part one. Obviously, you won't see that video till this one's uploaded. Uh, you won't see this one till this, that one's uploaded first. Because obviously, this one I'm still building right now. Okay, the next step is the PCU. Um, this is a big piece of component for the computer. But because we've done all the rest quite quick, Actually, we could do the RAM first, just put that back in. Um, at this stage, the computer could boot as soon as the PSU's in. Um, but you only get the BIOS because you've got no drives, you haven't been doing anything within Windows at this stage. why that's not plugging in. Give me a sec guys. Oh I know why. Oh try putting the RAM in the wrong way around. It's probably not a problem. But it is the machine probably what's won't burn on no why. That means if that caused an issue it wouldn't require any motherboard but I want a foot so because the machine hasn't been booted up with that in there. Okay. The next step is actually, that's the reason why I shouldn't put that in yet. It's not a problem. Cool. P 
key issue is in. Uh, that would have been a issue. I don't think it will be. As long as I can get. Okay, that's some useful cables management there actually. I managed to cable manage that big USB one behind the PSU. Okay, at this step I recommend place I would put plug in the um, PSU to power as if the machine would boot, but I'm going to continue just because that'll be easier now for me. Okay, the next step is to move this little piece off the front so we can plug that plasticky thing in the front again. That video's got two minutes left and that'll be up on YouTube for you guys to watch. Obviously you don't really need to know all that because it's not live. If this was live guys, yeah, that'd be quite useful for you, but it's not. Cool. Now that's plugged back in. I'm gonna do this on an angle. Um, Okay, machine is now drives, it's, um, hard drive stuff like that. So I'm going to put the GPU back in. And now I'm going to plug that in. Plug that bracket thingy back in. GPU is back in. The next stage is to will be hard drive set of cables. Oh, power supply screwed actually. I want to make sure they are in. So get that falls out while the machine's operational. And that'd be a pain in the arse if someone had that problem. I'm not sure if you can see me screwing those in. You might just be able to see my hand screwing those in. <clears throat> that video is now uploaded and on YouTube. But that's not that's fine, so I'll put part two up as soon as this is done. We could also do a post test in a minute and see if the machine boots. That will show you that I built the entire machine um, and got it back going after it's been built, including taking the CPU out. It's the most hard thing most people find, but there's other things people find hard when you're on a computer. The last thing is to set the cables and hard drives. So while, while I get my set of cables, um, let's get both my setters. Okay, the orange was for the hard drive. The terabyte drive, so I'm going to plug that. This type of case, guys, you might find it easier not to plug the um, that graphics card into in a minute, but. I thought it'd be easier if I'd do it in earlier. At the both in anyway, cool. Okay, now it's the drive powers. Power. Uh, okay, so that needs. Okay, so we want it. I would rather I try and hide these cables. So what I normally do is work out. Okay, so that means that I go in the first one. And this second one. Now that other one is exactly the same. Okay, both power in. The last thing to do is put SATA in, put the door case on. Um, other than that, I can't see anything else I do need to do. Well, obviously, no. We suddenly get a post error. But I don't think we will. Obviously, I'm going to put the SATA cable 
through the gap and then down out the back. Okay. That is basically it guys, I'm just going to plug, that's not plug, but, um, what I've had before guys is having these, some of these cables get in the way, so you might just want to push, mm. yeah we've got a load of cables, just above here, you might give us a post there, if I knock one out Okay. Uh, yeah, we've got the CP wire as well. Doesn't seem to be an issue there. That's the issue. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeah, that fan. Because it's so small case, guys, so there was issues getting all those cables to plug in together. So what I had to do is just try and push them ender. That's all done now, guys. The last step is to test through a test boot. Everyone, welcome back. I'm sorry about the cut out in the video. The, um, the machines all put together. The only thing you would have missed is me closing this and putting it in. That's all closed in now. You saw everything else we picking all those into the machine. So now we're just going to do a post test. This shows you the machine will boot into Windows slash the operating system slash BIOS area. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this TV on first because otherwise you won't see the Dell logo of the machine. Okay, and I'll post and stop the machine booting and I'm hoping. So the machine has posted, um, it's got to the boot system, obviously it's a lurk keyboard not found because there's no keyboard is plugged in. What should happen, we should boot to Windows as the screen should start. And yeah, that's the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I know obviously, sorry about the missed clips, you have a missed clip on the end of this video. Um, I might call it part three, obviously it'll be a little bit stupid if I call it part three. So what I'll probably do is put the two missed clips together in one. So you get to see it on the end there. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this approximately took me quite a long time. Obviously the first video is about 12 minutes long and this one's probably be about the same when we get to rendering it because I'm going to render this one now because of the issue. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, anything else you'd like to know about this machine, just feel free to contact me um, on my YouTube channel or social media like Facebook um, as I've got my, my Facebook page. I'm going to do now, put the lid on, that's the machine being completely finished, we can obviously put it up like that, obviously you didn't see that, so that's all operate, op the operational machine, so I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching, and please rate, comment, and subscribe, thank you.